Hi. Now, in the previous video, we were told that the point P represents a complex number Z on an argon diagram such that it was given by this equation here. And we had to describe the locus of it. And we found that this equation, its Cartesian form, was this, which represented a circle with a center at x equals 4, y equals minus 2, and a radius which was equal to the square root of 20. Now we're told that Q represents a complex number Z on an argon diagram, such that the arg of Z minus 6 equals minus 3 pi over 4. And we're asked to sketch on the same argon diagram the locus of P and the locus of Q as Z varies. And then find out the complex number for which both these equations are true. So if you'd like to give this a go and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back when ready and as usual, you can check your work solution with mine or fast forward to the end just to uh, see all the workings and get to the answer very quickly. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So first of all then, if we're to sketch the locus of P, we've seen then that it's a circle, center 4, minus 2, and radius root 20. So if we just draw up our axis, real axis, imaginary axis, then if we draw that circle in, it's going to look something like this. And notice that I've got it going through the origin as well, because you can see that when x equals 0 and y equals 0, we're going to have 16 plus 4 equals 20. So it does satisfy the equation when it goes through the origin. Now, for Q, this we should recognize, the arg of Z minus 6 equals minus 3 pi upon 4. This is what we call a half line. It starts at the point 6 on the real axis. So if I was to mark off, say, 6, say, somewhere around here, then we've got a half line inclined at an angle of minus 3 pi upon 4 radians to the positive real axis. So that's going to be a line going back something like this. And I know that it's going to go through the center of the circle at 4 minus 2, because minus 3 pi upon 4 is a line inclined, if you like. This acute angle in here would be 45 degrees. So I know for every one unit across, you'd expect to drop one unit down. And I can see that if I go two units across to the 4, and two units down, I'll be at 4 minus 2. So that line then is going to go through there and then carry on down something like that. OK, it's also going to cross this axis here at the point minus 6, because it's inclined at pi upon 4 radians here, OK, to the horizontal, this part in here, which is equivalent of 45 degrees. Might as well put as well that angle in here, OK, this is the arg part in there, and that is an angle of minus 3 pi upon 4. OK, so uh, that's part B. Now we have got to find out the complex number for which both these equations are satisfied. And that's got to be at this point here, the point of intersection of the two equations. So in order to find that out, what I need to do is get the Cartesian equation of this line here, this half line. Now you can see that this line's got a gradient of 1, because if we were to draw a triangle in here, you can see that for every 6 units across, it rises 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. And it also passes through the y-axis at minus 6, so it's going to have a Cartesian equation of y equals x minus 6. So I've got my two equations, which I'll number. 1 and 2, and we've got to solve these simultaneously. So what I'm going to do is, let's say we substitute, put sub for short, substitute equation 2 into equation 1. And if we do that, what we're going to have is just x minus 4 there, 
all squared, x minus 4 all squared, then plus, and instead of the y, we've got x minus 6, and then plus the 2 there, so it's going to be x minus 4. So we've got that squared, okay, and it equals 20. So what we've got, if we were to square this bracket out, we've got x squared minus 8x plus 16. And what I'm going to do is I've got twice this here, all right? So I'm going to have two lots of x squared and then minus 16x. And then I'm going to have plus 32. And then if I take 20 from both sides, that just leaves me with plus 12. And that's going to equal 0. So we've got a quadratic equation then. And I can divide all of this by 2. So therefore I get x squared minus 8x plus 6 equals 0. Now this won't factorise, which is a bit unfortunate. So what we're going to have to do then is use the quadratic formula. So using that we're going to have 8 plus or minus the square root then of minus 8 all squared minus 4 times the 1 times the 6 okay and all of this is divided by 2 times 1 okay so the quadratic formula there now if we work out what we get from this we find that we therefore have x equals 8 here plus or minus the square root of well, that's 64 minus 24, so it's going to be the square root of 40, root 40, and we're dividing all of this by 2. Square root of 40, I can break down as being four, the root of 4 times 10, so that's going to be 2 root 10, and so therefore we have 8 plus or minus 2 root 10, and that's divided by 2. And I can divide 2 into each of those two terms on the top and get 4 plus or minus root 10. Now I can see that this point here for x has got to be a value less than the 6 here. Remember that what I've said here, y equals x minus 6, is really going to be a full line going through here. So you can expect an intersection point up here. And the x value here will be more than 6, but this one down here will be less than 6. And I'm going to get a value less than 6 when I take the negative option here. So what we'll say is that since x is less than 6, I can see that x must be equal to 4 minus root 10. And so therefore, if we substitute this back into 2, I can see that y must be equal to the 4 minus that 6, that's going to be minus 2, and then we've got minus root 10. So what does that make the value for z? I'll just draw z in, by the way. z would be from the origin to this point here. Just mark that in like so. And so, therefore, we've got that z must be equal to the real part here, which is going to be 4 minus root 10. So we've got 4 minus root 10. And then plus the imaginary part, which is going to be negative, And that's going to be i times minus 2 minus root 10. All right.